I live to the tune of hoping hopelessly. I am country, drawn to the music of the land, not the red on the white and the blue, but the green and the amber, the ochre, orange country. Since 1986, the Dodge Poetry Festival has attracted over 500 poets, some of them world-renowned, while routinely attracting audiences of 17 to 20,000, many of which are students and teachers from around the country. This year's festival was held in Newark at NJ Pack and other nearby venues. First Petty Baptist Church. Bill O'Neill, a high school teacher, brought some of his students to the 2012 festival so they could experience the live poetry performances. The terrible lions have roared for six months, and though I don't know it, they'll roar for six more, then be extinguished, leaving only their irksome echo the rest of my life. It gives me a chance to expose the children to live poetry from people who do it for a living, and you know, they put their heart and their soul in the poetry. Something that will quit and won't start. Something you know but can't stand, can't know but get along with. In the worst hour of the worst season of the worst year of a whole people, a man set out from the workhouse with his wife. I wake again with a sesame seed in a green-headed pea, velvety, velvety without a morning path, just like this. And Juan Felipe Herrera, they saw someone who was interested in social issues, and they wanted to see him read in, in a very big way. Well, I return it too with La Nancy and her bossy frog, Greek book stamps and blue island oceans, tiny hopes, tiny hands from another daydream, but things still smell like the night. On my bus ride here, actually, I was reading some of um, Mr. Herrera's work, and I thought it was really interesting. Mr. Herrera was sort of like a social critique, which is exactly the kind of poetry that I embrace and love to read. The festival also features workshops and forums where poets can interact with aspiring students of poetry. I kind of, as an artist, I've always struggled with, um, I guess, not pouring too much of myself into the poem or the song that I'm trying to produce. And so I was just curious, um, at what point does a poem become confessional? If I read your question correctly, what you're struggling is like sort of how much of myself do I put into the poem or not? And I think the real question is just, Think about the poem itself. I mean, there, there are ways um, that you can write a whole sort of conceit or me uh, central metaphor of a poem that has nothing, that has not one eye in it, and yet is somehow that feeling is completely there without ever using the first person. So a lot of students have a problem with poetry, and it happens every year when I start teaching it. Oh, I can't do poetry. I can't understand what they're saying. It's too deep, uh, and, and it has to rhyme, and so. To, to dispel that myth and to, to let them realize that uh, you know, poetry is a, a fuzzy thing, not some cold, horrible, intellectual problem to be solved is, is a wonderful thing. That's, that's what I like most about it. So our first reader is Patrice. One of the venues offered an open mic session for those who wanted to share their works. My poem is entitled, He's Beautiful to Me. Not out there, but in here, feeling alone yet he wants to get in. I don't let him because of what others may think. I just wanted to say my poem no, because it was really like, I don't know, it was something I wanted to share with other people, not people that know me, but like with other people. And I'm not really shy to like go and say stuff. I'm not shy at all, so it's not something that was hard for me to do. As I step up into the bland, Renaissance paintings of the chosen decor, for the guts, breathing through a screen door, leading to an indoor pool. Allow me to take you to the finer things. Porcelain skin occupies nine-tenths of these beautiful outlets in Somerset, Montgomery, Princeton, Plainsboro, etc. Uh, the poem is entitled Nice Neighborhoods, and um, it all started, I think, January of last year, uh, when I heard about Occupy, Occupy Wall Street. See, while their parents are busy drowning in the money, cars, clothes, fame, they aren't busy raising children for the world, even when they lie on the cusp of entry. They aren't busy with church. They aren't busy helping with schoolwork. They aren't busy playing Timothy's birthday party, nor planning Susie's sweet 16th. They aren't busy teaching their children to ride bicycles. No. Instead, they hire the very much indentured servants, asking the same shoulders they stepped on 
to support their child and hoping, praying their slaves remain obsequious. Very few things that I write I actually feel comfortable sharing, you know? But I wrote this and I decided this is too important to not share. For me this is a unique opportunity with my children to bring them here, which is to hear the spoken word and not just see it on paper, um, and to appreciate poetry not on an intellectual level, but on just on a sort of Zen level, where you just look at it as poetry, as music, as uh, words that uh, can be more magical and, and, and create the Zen moment, which is the, the real driving force be behind the Dodge philosophy.